Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Highlights from some of the biggest games and the best teams in the state, including Class 5A number one Springdale taking on Russellville and Class 4A number one Greenwood battling Greenbrier. Highlights of those games plus many more from week six of the regular season, plus pregame pep talks, postgame reaction, and the latest high school rankings. It's all straight ahead on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Good afternoon and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton and half of the regular season is behind us now. We've got highlights of some of the biggest games from week six of the regular season straight ahead for you on this edition of Hooton's Arkansas Football and we'll get things started with highlights from Class 2A coming up in one minute on Hooton's Arkansas. Just go do what we do. Okay. Hey guys, it's a great night. Stands are full of people that are here to see you. Nice, cool weather. Now you can't ask for a better opportunity. Remember this, and I'll shut up. I'm not all about raw raw. Let's go out. And let's let's win all the war first. Win the battle. Win the battle in front of you. Win your little turf war, and then overall we'll win the big war. That's Clarendon's first year coach Bobby Hart getting his Lions ready for the mighty Barton Bears last night in a game that likely decided the 6AA Conference Championship. On the other sidelines, there he is, the legend, the dean, the winningest coach in Arkansas, Barton's Frank McClellan, who needs just four more wins to reach 300 victories as coach of the small school located just outside of Helena. Barton jumped to a 6 to nothing lead early, and here he comes, stud senior fullback Courtney Winston. He's a load taken around the left side for a big game, but this drive would stall. On the next play, wingback Billy Fears takes a big hit from Clarence Chris McCray, and Cedric Houston recovers for the Lions. Then on offense, McCray is a cornerback and finds Ricky Johnson over the middle for a nice game. But Razorback assistant coach Danny Nutt wasn't in Clarendon to see the Lions pass. He wanted to see number 21, Mr. Houston, run the ball. And Cedric talked a good talk during this timeout. But the Bear defense kept its paws on Cedric most of the night. That's Courtney Winston with the big hit. Then Barton's Willie Fears would trot around the left end for another score, and the Bears are likely on their way to another undefeated regular season and the 6AA championship. Hooton's Arkansas football is looking forward to a playoff showdown between Barton and Shiloh Christian in the quarterfinals. That game will be played at Barton on Thanksgiving weekend, and we expect it will decide the state championship. Final score from last night in Clarendon, Barton 28, Clarendon 6. No hot dogs, we ain't no, ain't no great players amongst us, but as a team, as one, we're a great team. Tonight, we put it all together, first time this year, and we continue the rest of the year. Tonight, we play as one. We'll go to the next level. Oh, baby. That's Boxite coach John Watson getting his Miners ready for the Jesse Bull Lions. Boxite came into the game undefeated, and the Miners would stay that way. Boxite quarterback Jason Osborne running the option around the left end. He's going to pick up 20 yards, and the penalty flags are against Jesse Bull, too. That sets up this Boxite touchdown by Damian Sal diving into the end zone. Jesse Bull quarterback Eric O'Neill then looks to throw over the middle, but Boxite's junior safety Tommy Gatlin picks off the pass. He takes off down the far sideline all the way to the eight-yard line. Sal would do the rest from there, and Boxite goes on to win. The Boxite junior high team lost to Jesseville Thursday night, but the senior high had a little trouble with the Lions as Boxite wins it big, 65-6 over Jesseville. In fact, Boxite has never lost to Jesseville in varsity football. The Miners are 6-0 and likely headed for a showdown at Magnet Cove in three weeks to decide the 5AA South Conference Championship. 
Number one, Shallow Christian won 42 to nothing last night, and the Saints won't be tested again until their game in three weeks against Charleston. Number two, Barton will likely get his chance against Shallow in the playoff quarterfinals. Again, that game will be played at Barton on Thanksgiving weekend, most likely. The new number three team in Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A poll is Harding Academy. The Wildcats took care of Arkansas Baptist last night to move up in the poll. Mineral Springs is number four, then it's Mark Tree. Rising drops from number three to number six after losing to Harmony Grove, which is at number nine this week. Then it's the Carlisle Bison rounding out, rounding out the top ten. The second ten starts with the Clarendon Lions, then it's the Smackover Buckaroos, Mayflower, Hampton, and the Gurdon Go Devils. Magnet Coves number 16, there's Boxite Augusta, the Greenland Pirates are number 19, and the Foreman Gators check in at number 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football highlights from Class 3A straight ahead. It's Arkansas football brought to you by Lander. We got a chance tonight, but one more conference foe behind us in the standings, okay? But we got to go out there and we got to take care of business. We good enough to beat anybody in our conference, but just about anybody else in our conference is good enough to beat us too if we don't go out and play. And I promise you this bunch tonight's good enough to beat you if you don't go out and play. They won't quit, and I know you're not gonna quit. I've seen you, I've been with you all year. I know what you like. Do your job, depend on your buddy beside you to do his, okay? That's Old Grove Hornet coach Bobby Tyner getting his team ready for a key 5 AAA conference matchup with Pulaski Academy. The Hornets came into the game with just one loss. Meanwhile, Pulaski Academy lost to Shallow Christian a couple of weeks ago, but were really trying to bounce back from that heartbreaker to BB last week. And on the first play of the game, Oak Grove fumbles, and Big Bad Junior Bruin Scott Landers jumps on it for PA. Then Landers is big buddy, quarterback Thomas Thrash. He's passed for close to 1,000 yards, but he can run it too. And he takes off out of the pocket and dives for the score to put PA ahead early. Oak Grove would come back though. Jared Velasco has a chance to score right here, but doesn't quite get in the end zone. But senior Clyde Seats, who's rushed for about 700 yards already this year, he'll get in the end zone. Oak Grove kicked the extra point to lead seven to six early, and it was close all night. But Pulaski Academy goes on to win a big one on the road. 22 to 13 over Oak Grove. Landers, Thrash, and the Bruins improve their record to four and two on the season and are still in the five triple A picture. <laughs> Who let them Badgers out? BB is still dancing atop the five AAA conference standings after a big win over Central Arkansas Christian last night. BB sophomore quarterback Chad Damon faced everybody out here and Justin Johnson's got it. Look at Justin go up the sidelines for an early Badger touchdown. Justin would also get in for the two point conversion and BB goes on to hand CAC its fourth loss of the season. 33 to six the final. BB improves its record to 4-1-1, one one, but must take a tough road test next Friday at Dover. And here is a look at the new Hootons Arkansas Football Class 3A poll. It's really not new though, the top 16 are exactly the same as a week ago. Ozark Hillbillies are still on top, then it's the Warren Lumberjacks, Fort Ice Red Bugs, Nashville Scrappers at number four, then it's Rivercrest, Boonville, Lone Oak, Dollarway, Farmington, and Brinkley. The second 10 starts with the Dardanelle Sand Lizards, then it's Gosnell, the Queen, Highland, BB, Pulaski Academy, and Star City drops out of the top 20. That allows McGee to move up to number 17. McGee had lost three in a row. They bounced back to win their pass two. Hamburg's number 18, then it's Green Forest, and the Dumas Bobcats check in at number 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 4A highlights straight ahead. Of Hooton's Arkansas football. Brought to you by First Security Bank. I bet you can't guess the school colors of green wood and green briar. They both wear blue. And the color fit the way green briar was feeling after this matchup in Faulkner County last night. Greenwood is ranked number one in Class 4A by Hooton's Arkansas football, and the Bulldogs had absolutely no trouble with the Panthers. Lefty quarterback Anthony Hancock connects with junior Josh Leftwich for 27 yards, then the screen pass to senior Ryan Jay before Hancock hits Josh Bell. Coming across the middle, there he goes. This guy is fast, 4-4 speed. 
He goes 30 yards for six, and that was just a sign of things to come. Greenwood is 6-0 with three of its final four games scheduled at home. Right now, the Blue Bulldogs from Greenwood are holding steady at number one. Final score, Greenwood 42, Greenbrier Goose Egg. If you haven't heard, 15 players, including seven starters, quit coach Danny Mallett's struggling Searcy football team on Monday. Last night, the remaining Lions regrouped and won 14 to nothing at Siloam Springs. James Godwin scored both touchdowns, including this one yard plunge midway through the third quarter. Art Bell kicked the extra point. Quarterback Matt Garlington, he led the Lions offense all night, throwing to Andy Dunlap for the big game right here. Then Drew Dixon would carry up the middle before Godwin would again carry it into scoring position. But the Lions would just take a knee on its final scoring threat and run out the clock. Inside linebacker Derek Foster was one of several seniors who stayed with the program. We came out thinking that we were going to do all right after we had 15 players quit. And now we just came out here and had to show them that we just had to play with heart, play the team and win. And we came out here and did it. We went, played a shutout and did real great. This is going to help us out a lot, build our esteem back up. From we were one and four. This is going to help us out. Think about it. Searcy, which was one and four heading into the game, has already won as many games without the 15 players that quit as it had won with those 15 players in the first five games. And here is a look at the new Hootons Arkansas Football Class 4A poll. Greenwood is still on top, then it's Alma, Osceola, and Wynn. Those are all the same. Watson Chapel is new at number five. Magnolia dropped out of the top five, in fact, out of the top ten. Monticello is number six, then it's Batesville, Hope, Harrison, and Arkadelphia. Harrison with a big win over Moralton. The Devil Dogs are down to number 12. You see Magnolia at 11. Then it's Hot Springs Lakeside. Gary Segrist doing a great job with the Rams. There's Searcy. At number 14, with their second win of the season last night. Newport's 15, Newport's probably going to make the playoffs. Fair is down to 16, then it's Nettleton, Whitehall, West Helena, and Green County Tech round out the top 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 5A highlights, including the Red Dogs from Springdale, Arkansas's number one team, next. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. Guys, you got a great chance to keep, keep things going our way. We've been playing well. You got a great opportunity tonight to go down the hill two at one, control our destiny. We still have that opportunity. We still can play for a championship. It's going to be a big crowd. They're homecoming crowd. Everything that you want in football. Great night. We finally got a good night of weather. We don't have to put those giant fans on the sideline. You're not going to worry about that. Let's do this. We, we've really got to come together tonight in every phase of the football game. And don't lose the focus. Do the things you've been coached to do this week. Don't get outside of that zone. Do the things you've been coached to do. Put those helmets on. Let's go. Let's lock and load. Yeah. Yeah. Barry Lunny guided Fort Smith Southside to three state titles in the 90s. And although his team is junior laden, the Rebels are still a legit state title contender this year. And senior quarterback Josh Driscoll is a big reason why. On the game's first play, Hank Nash takes off with Driscoll's screen pass. A little bit later, Driscoll gets loose on the option keeper coming right at you. Then Driscoll changes the play at the line of scrimmage. He changes the play and throws a beautiful ball. The senior split in Will Cameron for a 35-yard touchdown and an early Rebel lead. Rodgers likes to run, but the Mounties came out throwing the ball a little bit more than normal last night. David Brewer finds Dax McCon coming right across the middle, but the Rebels' defense is pretty tough too. Watch number 23, that's Bobby Dean Meek, coming hard on the blitz, and Southside rips Rodgers. Final score, Rebels 41, Rodgers 7. A year ago at this time, the Bryant Hornets were flying high at 6-0 and the Hornets thought they had a chance to be better this fall. But every opponent is gunning for Bryant, including El Dorado, which visited Saline County last night to avenge its 31-7 loss at El Dorado last year. But the beat-up Hornets, who lost their top rusher with a shoulder injury last week, would fight hard. That's Josh Farmer scoring on a short run up the middle. 
Elder Raider quarterback Elliot Jacobs. He was a member of the Sonic preseason super team at Hooters Arkansas Football Magazine, and you can see why. Great run, then a great throw. Watch this, and Elder Raider comes out a winner. The Wildcats are sharing the 5A South Conference lead with Sheridan. Final score, El Dorado 24, Bryant 12. Speaking of Sheridan, the Yellow Jackets and this team in red, Cabot. They're the only two teams with perfect records in Class 5A. Cabot senior quarterback Aaron Peoples has directed the Panthers to a 6-0 start. He can run and pass when asked. Matt Taylor, an Arkansas Scholar Athlete of the Week winner, catches this toss, and the Panthers go on to flog Forest City. Final score, Cabot 42, Forest City 7. It was a happy homecoming for senior quarterback Will Hunt and top-ranked Springdale. Hunt has committed to play for Virginia Tech, and the Hokies can only hope for some willpower like this. Watch Hunt on the run, find a Nathan Pinalto, and it's a 32-yard touchdown for the Red Dogs. That made it 13 to nothing. Now, Russell's offense has been one of the state's top scoring units this fall, but sophomore quarterback Landon Leach and the Cyclones had a long night in Springdale. Jay Reddish returns this interception. That sets up Tim Reed's nice run right up the middle, and then it's more willpower. Hunt goes six yards, he'll stretch for the score, and Springdale goes on to win. Final score, number one Red Dogs, 28, Russellville, zero. There are usually playoff implications when North Little Rock and Conway get together, and last night was no exception. Conway is in the white, and the Jones boys are wearing number 22. Brian Jones, meet North Little Rock's Nick Jones. Big stop for the charging Wildcats, but Conway got another big night from its bruising fullback, Kyle Hillis. The Wampus Cats were up seven to nothing early, and they go on to win it 17 to seven over North Little Rock. If it weren't for the stripes, you might not know that this is Pine Bluff. The Zebras are a bit down this year, and they're not running that familiar wishbone. Instead, Pine Bluff is chunking it this year. At Benton last night, quarterback Omar Blunt passed for 290 yards. He heaves this touchdown toss to Cedric Taggart. And the Zebras have a clean sweep of Saline County this year. Final score, Pine Bluff 27, Benton 10. Here's a new look at the Class 5A poll. Springdale still on top, and then it's Northside, Southside, Cabot, and Central. Those are all the same. El Dorado's number six. Conway moves up to number seven, and Sheridan's undefeated at number eight. Then it's Fayetteville, West Memphis, Rogers. Starts the second ten, followed by Jacksonville, Lake Hamilton, Little Rock Hall, and Camden Fairview. Pine Bluff is number 16. Bryant's down to 17. Then it's Bentonville, Van Buren, and North Little Rock. It's now it's time for Arkla's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Conway's James King tackles his schoolwork with just as much gusto as he does opposing ball carriers. He led the Wampus Cats in tackles last season while maintaining a 3.8 GPA. Most underclassmen would love to be in James' shoes, talented on and off the field and already being recruited to play college football. But if you want to make it in the classroom, James has some simple advice. Basically, it just matters how bad you want it. It's, I mean, it, at times it gets tough, but if you want it bad enough, then you're going to get You have to realize that you can't play football without having the academics. Academics come first. Good advice from Conway's James King, our ARCLA Scholar Athlete of the Week. Okay, Mark, thanks a lot, and congratulations to James, again, our ARCLA Scholar Athlete of the Week. And thank you for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football today. Remember, next week we will be on again at 5 o'clock as the Major League Baseball playoffs continue on NBC. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next Saturday at 5, and thanks for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You heard that bell ringing? Yeah.